If you pull a spring, it extends. If you then let it go, it moves back to the original length. Robert Hooke, a 17th century scientist, found that the extension of a spring is directly equivalent to the force pulling it. This is known as Hooke's law. If you then pull a spring, it deforms because of contractional forces. If you compress it, we would say that it deforms because of tensional forces. Hooke's law is given by F is equal to minus K times the change in X. F is the tensional contractional force, K is the spring constant, and delta X is the extension. If you would hang up a spring or a piece of wire and then attach a weight to it, one can draw a graph of contractional force to extension. The graph would be a straight line up to a point. This point is called the proportional limit, after which the graph starts to deviate, which is called the elasticity boundary. If the elasticity boundary is not exceeded, the wire will move back to its original length. Otherwise, a wire or a rubber band will have permanent deformation. This we call the plastic region. And then finally, if the material is stretched too long, it will break. If you have two pieces of wire of the same material and the same diameter, but the one is longer than the other, which one of the two will extend the most? The correct answer is that the longest wire will extend the most. One can understand it as two wires having identical springs, but the long wire will have more springs than the short wire. The stress is the same and both will be extended the same. But the long wire which has more imaginary springs will extend more because of this. If you would divide the extension by the length of the wire, both would get the same answer. The definition of deformation is therefore the extension per unit length. Deformation doesn't have a unit and it's expressed as a specific rate. Let's say the extension is 10% on a meter long wire, then we would get that the wire extends 10 centimeters. Let's say we have two wires of the same length and the same material, but the diameter is different. We would then get that the thicker wire has a larger diameter surface than the thinner wire, and the larger contractional force is spread through the surface. Stress is defined as force per unit surface area. This is therefore also measured in Pascal. Elasticity is the characteristic of a material to move back to its original shape after it has been distorted. If a substance doesn't move back to its original condition, we say that it has undergone plastic deformation. An example of a stretchable material is something like copper because it can be pulled to become a long piece. Disintegration refers to an object or material that breaks. If the stress on a solid object is too much, it will break. Metals, on the other hand, are ductile, which means it can be shaped if you hit it with a hammer. It is also stretchable because it can be pulled to form a wire. Crawling means that a material changes shape even if the force applied to it remains constant. We see this in lead supports of old buildings. This even happens to glass panels over time. An example of disintegration is a metal beam which tears, if it is subject to tensional forces in opposite directions. In the figure you see a breaking rivet when two plates are pulled in opposite directions. This is called shearing. Metals also comprise of little grains which form a metal grid to strengthen the metal. In practice, x-rays are used to determine the strength of welds. This is done to see if there are any cracks in the weld so it lasts. This process is called metallurgy. A material is an alloy if it comprises of more than one type of matter. Metals, for example, can be hardened or their characteristics can be changed by mixing it with other materials. Steel, for example, is an alloy of iron and a little bit of carbon. 
The carbon helps the metal layers to stick on each other and not slide over each other. The temperature and the size of the grains can be changed when it is processed to strengthen the metal. Extinguishing is when metal is heated up very fast and then cooled down with water. This process makes the metal very hard and brittle. The metal can also be made to bend easily. This is done by cooling it down slowly. This process is called glowing out. Metal can also be made spring-like through tempering. Glowed out steel is taken and heated up again and then cooled down very fast with cold water. It is then cleaned with amaryl paper and heated up again until it is a bluish color. If it cools down it would be sticky and spring-like. Microscopic photos of materials by putting it further than the elasticity boundary shows slide lines. These are lines on two levels of atoms which move relative to each other. A disruption takes place if one level of atoms are pushed out by others. The disruption can move over a crystal because the atoms simply move into each other's places, one atom at a time. Hardening by machining is a process where metals are strengthened by bending them while they are cold. On atomic level, the number of disruptions increase. The hardening from the processing also increases the number of atoms disrupted from their sliding lines. This then makes shifts more difficult.